Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and on this show, we're going to show you how to merge Git branches. So sit back and let the knowledge flow in, because SE Geek begins now. Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about merging. So this is, merging is a way to bring the commits from one uh, particular branch to another. So we're on our test two branch, and there, there'll be no, uh, there should be no conflicts if we merge master into this. It'll just bring it up to where master is. So let's, you know, try that. Get merge master so that you know you basically you say that you're merging you know master into the current branch now if you want to you could be you know very specific and you know specify the to and froms and you know all that by i think it's uh, i'd have to look it up the syntax but you know basically you have i think it's would be um from and to, but I'm not sure offhand. So shorthand, just point, put the uh, one that you're merging into the current one, and we'll do that. So that brought us up to master. So if we do a get K right now, you'll see that test two is the same as master. Now, if you'll remember from the previous uh, video, we actually made tests so that it would actually conflict with master. So let's do a get checkout um, check out test and we'll clear. So usually the general workflow that you want to get uh, in the habit of when you're doing uh, you know different branches and merging is usually you want to always uh, merge master or whatever branch that you branched off into your own often and keep it up to date to limit merge conflicts. That's one of the things, you know, that makes gets, you know, since merging is very cheap and, you know, branching is very cheap compared to other version controls, doing it often is easier and, you know, it's, it keeps, you know, uh, merge conflicts to a minimum. Now, when you have a merge conflict, the good thing to do is, like, if it's just a trivial merge conflict, like, you know, some white space, or you, you know, you know, what to change in order to get things to be right again, go ahead and do it. But if it's some code that changed, you know, and there's conflict and you don't really know how to merge it properly, usually the best thing to do is to not merge it and, uh, you know, you, you track down the person who, uh, you know, made the change and ask them for help merging it. You know, don't just, you know, go into a merge tool, which I'll show you in a little bit, and, you know, choose just yours or just theirs and go with that. Because that can cause bugs very quickly. Um, usually, you know, it's it's a good idea just to merge properly. Another thing that you can do is since, you know, someone can pull from you, which I'll, I'll show you how to set that up in another tutorial, uh, you could ask them to pull from you, resolve the conflict, and then you could pull, you know, the change back from them, which, you know, would, that's one of the you know, the ways uh, Linus uh, actually designed get to work. So, you know, that that's actually a really nice way to do it. A lot of people uh, that I've seen use Git haven't gotten to that point yet. They still use the centralized model. But uh, that's one thing that you can do. So what we're going to do right now is, you know, just try this. And we're going to do a get merge master. And this should have a conflict. And it's like, oh, crap, there's a conflict. What do we do now? We use get merge tool. But let's just look around first and we'll do a get status. And it says that test.txt is in conflict. 
So if I do um, an ls, uh, let me see just text.txt. So actually, let's just do a jedit test2. And just to get a look at this. So this actually shows you the difference between, you know, what's there and, you know, what the changes are. Like, uh, see, in head, there's, you know, nothing here. In the master, there's this line. And you can actually go through and manually edit, uh, you know, merges this way. And then, you know, what you do when you're done is you actually uh, do a get add to when, uh, to mark that commit as, you know, merge successfully. I wouldn't recommend this because, you know, it, this is like, you know, a trivial commit that we made in our test repository. When you get into a real repository, merges usually aren't this trivial. And I, I don't like, you know, actually looking at it in a text editor like this. So what I do is I use a get merge tool. And all right, it you know shows us a little bit of information. It shows us the file. And our merge tool of choice is meld. So we hit enter. And you get this, you know, nice little three pane view. Uh if you're on Windows, uh I usually set up tortoise uh Mer I think it's tortoise merge, and it has a similar view, uh, but in this case, uh, you know, we have this one, and so you know, you get to see, you know, one repository's version, the other, and the what you'd get on the merge. So we're going to say, uh, actually, I think it's we use this one, this version of that. And we'll bring this version over here. So this is how we want it to actually be merged. And this is how it would successfully be merged. So, you know, you can go back and forth. And this is where the exit true is particularly important. Now, what you want to do is before you exit, you want to just do a save. Or make sure it's saved. I guess it already did save. It just... The fact that it shows that star ignores, annoys me because usually most files, when you save them, stars go away, but whatever. So we'll close that. Oh. Save selected. Okay. And. Hmm. Interesting. Hit return, mail warning, G object, quota. So I had an error. I think I don't have. I might not have meld set up right. So let's do a get status. Do a get edit just to make sure. Because I'm not sure. Stranded failed self notebook a pen page. Not sure what that is. If that might be related to the version of meld. I have, but, oops, <laughs> let's just make sure that looks, that looks correct, so I think that might have been just meld, oh yeah, meld window, so this was just meld window, so, you know, what it did for us is it added, uh, you know, that committed file to you know, our repository to be committed. So we're in a merging state right now still. Um, so we go to get GUI, or you could do a get commit here. And what it does is it brings up this, which is, uh, you know, the merge commit uh, message. And it, you know, tells you what it's merging, making changes, and it tells you what the uh, conflict is. So what we can do here is if we just commit that, now we close that and we do a get k we can see our merge here so we split off for these two commits and then there's this you know one commit that was on this master branch and here's our merge commit right here 
and you know we get to see the file the changes and this you know merge actually had a change in the merge so you know the actual merge commit has a diff itself so if we close that now what we could do is we could do a get checkout master we'll just clear this up and we can do a get merge test which will merge test into master so one thing you want to do uh, is when you're going to merge to like you know say your master or release branch or what not you want to merge from that first resolve conflicts and then merge to that branch usually so we had our test branch we merged from master resolve those conflicts and now we're going to mer merge that branch into master so you know the conflicts are already resolved we we resolve those you know on our test branch side you generally don't want to resolve those on the master side because you know master is usually you know the branch your integration branch from you know get repository standpoint you know it doesn't have to be master it could be another branch you know it get doesn't restrict you to that but usually that's how it's set up and usually uh, as I've seen it you'll have a master branch and you might have a release branch which you want to keep your release branch really clean uh, as in you know only things that are actually going out and going to be released get merged to that branch get promoted from master to release so but for our our case we're going to merge our test branch into master so we do that and it did its merge and you'll see this little fast forward um, what fast forward means is because that had uh, usually uh, because it, when it does a merge if it can just move the pointer from uh, you know where it its branch pointer from one commit to another it'll do a, what's called a fast forward and you can do there are options around this uh, which I don't play with too much but you know it, you can tell it to not do fast forward commits and stuff like that but this fast forward it to the last commit so it just you know it moved the pointer rather than you know doing the merge because you know there's no reason it didn't have to do anything special so now we have that and if we do a get k here we see that master is now in the same state that test is and you can see the two labels right there so that's the basics of merging and actually resolving a conflict in a merge now these were very trivial merges uh, but if you merge often usually uh, you know you, you don't have as big a conflicts that it then if you just like let something slide for like months now in a centralized repository from what I've seen is people don't you know they don't branch or merge often which means when they do merge it's a big headache and that's usually due to the uh, cost of branching and merging in centralized repositories. In Git, you don't have those costs, so you know you should do it often. You should do merging often, especially when it's on your own branch. You know, it, merging into like master, you might not be able to do as often, but merging from master into your own, you should be able to do often. Uh, and that's pretty much merging. So.